Hello UCE families. Hope you're all doing well and you're getting out and enjoying this very summer-like weather this past week. A couple of things I'd like to share. First, I want to thank those families who could make it to our chalk and art um, games event in the parking lot last weekend. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed playing Foursquare. It had been many years since I had a chance to do that, and I loved it. It was one of my favorite games on the playground when I was young. Also, coming up on June 25th, I'm going to host a picnic and campfire. So bring your lawn chair or blanket and a light supper or some snacks, and we'll have some you know, yard games kind of thing and a campfire and I will provide some s'mores materials so hope you can join me then. We will continue this week with our theme of play. Yay! It's a fun one for the summer and our focus is on the segment around the neighborhood. First let me light my chalice. There we go. Every time I light my chalice, I think of you all. Someday we will be in person, mostly full force, I would think. And it seems like that's coming soon. So fingers crossed that we all can manage to be together again this fall. So around the neighborhood, Usually this segment is a treasure hunt of some sort, and that is the case again this month. This time we are focusing on a nature-based treasure hunt. Now, you don't have to do this treasure hunt. You could do the one that I sent home in your soul kit packet. So, or you can do them both, of course. Either way, it's a chance to get outside, collect some things in nature, and have some fun. So the idea is to look for things around your neighborhood that are nature-based and then do something fun with them, play with them somehow. So for example, rocks. Rocks are an easy thing to collect and find around town, huh? Or on a walk in the woods. I happen to love rocks. I collect rocks. I have rocks here in my office that came from places that I visited or from friends and people that I've known that know that I really like rocks and they found something special and gave it to me. So the idea is to collect some rocks and do something fun with them. So what can you do with rocks? Well, it's, you can stack them obviously. Um, that is called a cairn. You'll sometimes see those when you're out hiking in, in nature. Um, a large stack of rocks that almost looks like they wouldn't balance, but yet they do. Um, some people say that we shouldn't be doing that though. So I have mixed feelings about it. I find that they're very pretty and, and beautiful to look at. Um, but I know that when we disturb rocks like that and, and stack them, that it might disturb animals and critters that are living below them. So usually I pick up rocks that are just lying out, you know, in the middle of the path or the sidewalk. Anyway, so you can stack them and, and build something out of them. Or what if you made a little path, sort of like a, a little labyrinth in your yard or in your driveway. It doesn't have to be an elaborate thing. Or another idea is to paint them. You may have seen painted rocks around your neighborhood. Sometimes people write a little uh, poem or saying or words of encouragement and then they leave them in the neighborhood. We did that in RE two summers ago. My first summer at UCE, we painted some rocks and then left them around the neighborhood as we walked to a park. How about sticks? I'm sure you would find some sticks around. What can you do with a bunch of sticks? 
Well, besides using them as swords and hurting your brothers or sisters or cousins, we don't want to uh, hurt people with them. But you could certainly play a game like pick up sticks. You know, instead of buying a box of pick up sticks, you can make your own game out of them. Or uh, play poo sticks. That's my family's favorite thing to do is play poo sticks. You don't know what poo sticks is? I'm hearing some of you ask. Well, here's how you play it. You have to be at a place where there's a little stream or river and a bridge crossing it. And you each find a stick and you stand on one side of the bridge and on the count of three, everyone drops their stick into the water. And then you cross to the other side of your bridge and you look to see whose stick comes out first with the current. That's poo sticks. And of course you can watch Winnie the Pooh and look for the episode or just Google it and you'll find a little video clip of how to play poo sticks. What about things like tall grasses and wild flowers? Um, you might not see very tall grasses in your neighborhood but you might see them when you're out walking in like a forest preserve. And generally we aren't supposed to pick things in a forest preserve. So unless it's something in your neighborhood that um, is growing on the side of a building maybe, I would not pick it. But what could you do if you found tall grasses or flowers? Well, of course, you could kind of braid them and make a crown or you can make them pretend to have them be snakes or something like that and scare people. Or you could just kind of hide in grasses without having to pick anything and play hide and seek, for example. How about mud or sand? A lot of you go to the beach during the summer. Sand is such fun. Of course, you can make sand castles and things like that, right? What else could you do with sand or mud? You could bake pies, right? Actually, you could bake mud. If you put it in the sun, it will get hard and dry. So maybe you would make something out of it and let it dry in the sun. Or look for worms. Just temporarily. Have you ever looked at a worm really close up? I had to dissect them in, in school and, and that was, you know, kind of yucky, but very interesting. Not that I'm saying you should cut open a worm, but it's interesting that worms actually have a lot of the same things that people do. You can probably Google that and see a picture of it rather than cutting open a worm. Of course, one of my favorite things to do in the sand is to just bury my toes. And of course, you could bury your whole body. Well, I would recommend keeping your face above the sand. We want to be safe after all. But it feels so cool when you bury your toes or your arms or your legs in the sand. On a hot summer day, it feels so good. What about things like seeds or berries or uh, you know little flowers? What can you do with those? How about making a mandala? You know, a, a pattern, a design with them in different colors. Or fairy houses, I know, are becoming popular again. You may see someone's yard with a little um, uh, house by a tree and, and they may even have like tiny little furniture. It's almost like decorating a little miniature dollhouse. So fairy houses are becoming popular. And if you go to a garden center, there may be an actual whole aisle just for fairy house decorating. But why not use nature? I mean, fairies use nature. So maybe you find little things in, in the yard or around the block that could uh, be parts of a fairy house. And last but not least, when it's a sunny day, shadows, you know. You can do all kinds of fun things with your shadow. You know, play that game where you can't step on someone's shadow while you're walking along, right? Or you can make shadow puppets. 
Yeah. Against the sidewalk or a wall. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure there's other things. Those are the things that are coming to my mind right off the top of my head. So there's our nature-based treasure hunt and some ways to play with the things you find around your neighborhood. So as I extinguish my chalice, blessed be and have a wonderful week ahead.